Hey, badass business owners, welcome back to the show. Today, I want to talk about cost of goods and expenses. First off, you need to keep in mind our number one calculation, right? That sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals your profits. But yet, so many small businesses put all of those cost of goods and expenses together going, look, I know I sell it, I know I've got bills to pay, and then I just pocket the money that's left over. It doesn't quite work that way, okay? That's how you were when you first started your business. Before you started realizing, hmm, I probably should know my business numbers. Well, if you're going to know your business numbers, then we need to understand what goes where. So let's take a closer look at cost of goods and expenses, and when does something go into it, a cost of good, and when does something go into an expense? So the first thing we have to do is understand what is a cost of goods? Well, you might have heard this called COGS, C-O-G-S, cost, cost of goods sold. Basically, what a cost of goods sold is, or a COG, is any money that you spend to provide a service or to sell a product. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. Let's pretend I have this pen here and I sell it for $2. Well, this pen is a product. So the first example is going to be a product, right? Well, I buy this pen for a dollar. I turn around and I sell it for $2. That means I have a cost of goods of $1 for me to buy this pen to sell it to you. All right. Now, when I have a service, let's say I install water heaters and I charge $2,000 for me to install that water heater. Well, that water heater is going to have a cost to it as well as any parts associated with that water heater. So let's just say that all the parts associated with this water heater I'm going to install is $900. So that way it means that my cost of goods are $9,000 in materials for the service that I provide. If I clean houses, I may not have that many products. I'm not really giving it to somebody, right? But I am using some materials and stuff to do the cleaning. Therefore, I do have some cost of goods being the materials that I use to clean. Not the items I clean with, not the vacuum, not the mop and all that. But if I have cleaning materials that I'm using, then I'm going to have that in my cost of goods. That might be a very small amount per customer. But when I'm buying my cost of goods in bulk, my overall cost of goods is going to have to clean that. So there's a difference between your total cost of goods for the business and each job's cost of goods. Right now, we're just talking about cost of goods in general. So keep in mind that you do have cost of goods, no matter how small it is, you want to make sure that you account for that. Now, your cost of goods could be a couple different ways. Remember the pen? I could buy the parts to the pen and assemble it, or I can just buy the pen already made. Or I could install the water heater and the customer provides the water heater. So therefore, I don't have the cost of goods with the water heater because the customer is providing that. If you're providing it, then it's going to be a cost of goods. Uh, Let's just say you have packaging and this comes in a a bag that I'm going to give you at the same time, then that's going to be a cost of goods because I'm giving it to the customer. And that's the best way to think about it is if you give it to the customer, it's probably going to be a cost of goods. Before I had an uh, ice cream shop, right? So if I gave somebody a shake, it was going to be not only the ice cream that they got and all the ingredients that went into making the shake, but it was also going to be the cup. It was going to be the straw. And if it had one of the long fancy spoons, it was going to have that as well. Some people might say, well, what about the napkin? Yeah, you give it to the customer. Therefore, it is a cost of goods. So basically, anything that's given to the customer is going to be considered a cost of goods. And that's what you want to keep in mind. Now, there is one other big area that's in your cost of goods that you must account for. And a lot of you are horrible at this, and I cannot tell you how bad you are at this. A cost of goods is also the labor hours associated with that product or service. So let's go back to our pen for a second. All right. If I buy the pen already made and I give it to somebody, there is no labor hours involved because I'm not making the pen. So it's just the pen for the, what I pay for the pen is the only cost of good. However, if I pay 50 cents for the materials of the pen and then I spend time assembling all the pens, now I have labor hours involved because I'm having to make it. Same thing with like a bicycle, for example. I can either buy a bike and just sell you the bike straight out or I could assemble, have somebody that's either myself or somebody else that's assembling the bicycle. Now I have labor hours involved with the assembling of the bicycle. By the way, just because you have a cashier and you have cashier duties, that does not mean they're assembling it or creating the product or service. They're an operational cost. We'll come back to that. But if you have labor hours associated with making your products, for example, if you make candles, you're going to have all the ingredients of that candle plus 
any hours that you have to spend making your product, making those candles. Those are going to be labor hours. When we go to our uh, example of the plumber, the plumber is going to have two hours to install the water heater. So now we have two labor hours associated with installing the water heater. So if you think about cost of goods, it's whatever you're giving to your customer or the labor hours associated with it. Now, you notice that earlier I mentioned you guys are doing this wrong, and here's why. Because you're a solopreneur, you're just taking money out of the business. You're not accounting for the fact that you are an employee doing labor work. Therefore, this hurts you in your pricing. And I've covered this in some other videos, and I'll cover it in some future videos as well. You, as a owner of your business, wear two hats. You have the employee hat you and the business owner hat you. The business owner you is paid off of the profitability of the business. The employee you is paid out of of the labor hours that you put into your business, the vast majority of your labor hours are going to be spent on producing or providing that product or service that you have. So therefore, you need to make sure you're accounting for the labor hours that you have for creating your product or service or providing the service that you do. Now, you might say, okay, Tammy, I spend half of my time creating or making the product and the other half, I'm just working in the business as a cashier, answering phones, doing everything else. Then yeah, you're probably going to split the right way to do it. You would want to split that payroll, that money that you're spending on as an employee, and you're going to put it the right stuff under cost of goods and the other part under your operational expenses. This does not mean you have to go out and create a payroll for yourself. I'm just saying when you capture it for your profit and loss, you want to make sure that you are capturing your time correctly wherever it belongs, if it's an operational thing or if it is a cost of goods. Once again, cost of goods, anything to make or provide the product or service. It's going to be a cost of goods. And the reason that it's so important is remember that calculation sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profits is you have something called gross margin. Your gross margin is the difference between your sales and your cost of goods because this is the potential profit that you have. So if I buy this for a dollar, sell it for two, my gross margin is one dollar. That means I have the potential to make one dollar, but nope. We don't make that dollar because we have these other expenses that we've been building up in the business, right? So what is an operational expense? Operational expenses are everything else that you spend money on in your business to run the business. So mar marketing, insurance, uh, cars, maintenance, uh, supplies, uh, training materials, whatever it is, it's all going to be an, uh, an operational expense to run the business, utilities, stuff like that. Now, what a lot of people will ask is, well, wait a minute, go back to that payroll example. What if the time that I spend on the operations of the business? Yeah, you're going to have labor there as well. So you might have labor under cost of goods and you're going to have labor under operational expenses. Uh, and by the way, your payroll, if you do have a payroll service, for those of you that have employees, that payroll is going to be under the cost for running that payroll, whether it's the company you pay or the insurance, the taxes and everything else that you have to pay, that's going to be an operational expense uh, on that side. It's only the hours and the money that's paid out for the actual product or service that is considered a cost of goods. So let's say you have four employees, three of them are installing stuff or out there doing it and one is back at the office. Three of those employees are going to be considered cost of goods and the other employee is going to be considered an operational expense. Uh, now, what's important about that is because every sale, a piece of that sale is needed to be set aside for these operational expenses. Your operational expenses are going to be a percentage of your total sales. That could be 10% for some of you, all the way up to 50% for some of you. Most of you, it's going to be 20, 25%. So let's pretend in my pin business, my operational expenses run 25%. That means 25% of the total sale. So if I sell this for $2, it's 25% of the $2, which would make it 50 cents. So if we go back to my calculation, sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profit, the sale is $2. The cost of goods is $1, leaving me a dollar gross margin. Now I have to pay that 50 cents towards my operational expenses, leaves me with 50 cents for the profit, right? But keep in mind, your profit has three places to go. It's going to pay for your taxes. It's going to pay for money that you're going to reinvest back into the business, maybe buying some more stuff, so if saving for a rainy day, future payroll, whatever the case may be. And then the third thing is going to go towards you for your uh, business owner money that you're going to take. I know I'm throwing a lot of stuff at you, but what's important is that you understand the difference between a cost of goods and an operational expense. Now, some people will ask me, what about shipping? Well, shipping technically is, you you can't, that's part of the entire package. I've seen it under both columns. It doesn't really matter where you want to put it. Uh, I Since it's part of what you're giving them and you're going to have to do it no matter what, I would go ahead and put it under cost of goods. Uh, if something is 
it has to be done no matter what to be able to provide that product or create um, that service or whatever the case may be. Mainly it's on you with products to, to ship it. I would go ahead and put it under a cost of goods. Now, when I say that, a lot of times what happens is the service-based people go, well, I should put my vehicle stuff under there and I should charge them for my vehicle expenses because I can't put that service in without it. Well, no, because that's something that you're keeping, okay? Um, yes, you have it, but that's a cost of business. You choose to do it out of your vehicle. That's It's not required to do that. It's something that you're you're having a vehicle for that. It's an operational expense. All your vehicles, the maintenance on it, all that good stuff is technically an operational expense. You don't want to try to throw everything in the kitchen sink under cost of goods. What you're trying to look for is what specifically goes into making that product or providing that service. Uh, but everything else is operational. Uh, for example, go back to the cleaning one. Another time that people will ask is, well, if I get a new mop every single time that I do someone's house, then that would be a cost of goods. Yes, if you're, it's once and done and you have to have it for that, I can see you building a case for that. But in most cases, people keep their tools and they reuse them over and over. They're operational expenses. Uh, so you want to keep that in mind. But anything that's like a throwaway, it's one-time use only for that specific job, then I would say that's a cost of goods. Uh, but if it's something that you're using multiple people over time, then it's not. Keep in mind, once again, though, that if I go back to the example with the cleaner, I might have a batch of some chemical that I use and it's used a little bit on every different client, then yes, that's still a cost of goods. Uh, it's just by product piece, it's very small, but your overall business, it's a total cost of goods for it. Hopefully this is making some sense for everybody and you can understand the difference between cost of goods and expenses because it's really important you understand this as you get better at your business numbers because you need to know where every dime in your business is going. And it's important that you capture your wage correctly when you're doing this. That's why it's important that you understand that, hey, when I'm pricing, I need to make sure that those labor hours are included in those cost of goods. Unfortunately, way too many people do not include their labor hours in it. And what happens is when they start hiring people, they get all screwed up because they never put it in their cost of goods. And now all of a sudden they've hired somebody. Now they have this cost of goods with somebody else. And they're like, oh my gosh, now I'm, I'm not making near the money I was making once before, before I hired this person. And the reality is I should be making more money. It doesn't work that way. Because if you never included in your pricing, your personal cost of goods, for your labor, for providing that product or creating that service, you are going to set yourself up for failure because you failed to do that. So it's really important that you get your arms around what is cost of goods in your business and what isn't. Now for you freelancers out there, because sometimes you guys will reach out to me as well, you're like, Tammy, I don't give them anything. I don't have a cost of goods. Yes, you do. We just talked about labor hours. If it still takes you two to three hours to do whatever it is that you do for your client, then you have cost of goods for the labor hours that you spend doing that. Matter of fact, if you give them paper at the end of the day or you hand them something, whatever you're handing them is a cost of goods as well. They might be really small. Typically in those types of businesses, we have very small cost of goods and a lot heavier when it comes to the operational side of it. At the end of the day, keep in mind, cost of goods is anything that you spend to provide or make the product or provide the service. All right. And then everything else is an operational expense to run the business in its entirety. So anything else is operational to keep that business going. And if you want to learn more about your cost of goods and your expenses and how it all relates to your profit and loss, then make sure that you're checking out this video over here when it talks about PL. And there's another video that I'll put up when it comes to paying yourself correctly. So this way you can understand that a little bit better as well. I check out one of them. It's definitely going to help you out. And I'll talk to you on the next video. Bye for now.